Grace, peace, and mercy be to all of us, from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's lay message is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 68, where we read, Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There's a story about a man who jumped out of an airplane only to discover that his parachute was jammed. As the wind rushed by him, he took the thing off and desperately tried to untangle it. And as he began to descend toward the ground at a tremendous speed, suddenly a man shot past him, flying upwardly at an equally tremendous speed. The man with the chute looked up and yelled, Hey, do you know anything about parachutes? The other man called down, No. Do you know anything about gas stoves? <laughs> One man was on his way up, the other was on his way down. We all know that life has its many ups and downs. The good times and bad times, the glad times and sad times the easy times and hard times. Suffice it to say that life is a whole lot more fun during those good, glad, and easy times than during the bad, sad, and hard times. Let's be honest, maybe with the exception of an exploding gas stove, the ups beat the downs every single time. There are a number of sayings about how to deal with life's ups and downs. Here's a few. Life is full of ups and downs. The trick is to enjoy the good times and to have the courage to go through the bad ones. Or, life is like a roller coaster. It has ups and downs, but it's your choice to scream or to enjoy the ride. Or sometimes you have to let life turn you upside down so you can learn how to live right side up. Another one, it isn't the ups and downs that make life so difficult, it's the sudden jerks. And finally, if there are no ups and downs in life, then you have flatlined. And we all know what that means. For us at this very time and place, we might be inclined to think that life has thrown us a bunch of bad, sad, and hard times. These times are more than just downs, these are deep downs. Today we're faced with a medical pandemic crisis that has led to sickness, death, social distancing, separation from friends and family, psychological stress, exhaustion and daily decisions of whether or not to wear a mask, go out in public, attend social functions, and even come to church. We agonize over whether we should send our kids to school or have them participate in remote learning. These deep downs include a polarized political climate that might rival anything we've seen in our lifetime. We've gone from the economic ups of record-setting employment and growth to the downs of high unemployment and decline. And just when we thought we might have made some real progress in racial understanding, today there seems to be as much or more racial divide than perhaps even before the Civil Rights Movement. Let's face it, those sayings about how we deal with life's ups and downs don't mention the deep downs. And that's what makes these times so tough. Some people might even question the fairness of these deep downs, that this is just too hard to accept. Remember those words, too hard to accept. We'll see them again in just a few minutes. And that's where today's text in John 6 comes in. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus feeds 5,000 people, and he and his disciples are like rock stars in their popularity. In verse 14, after the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet 
who is to come into the world. For the disciples, at least, this is a definite up in life. And then a few verses later, Jesus and his disciples are in the synagogue in Capernaum. People have packed the temple to hear from Jesus and to hopefully witness more miracles. The disciples are standing near him with a sense of pride in seeing all the people present. Still a big up. Then Jesus begins to speak about the bread of life sent down from heaven. He transitions from the miracle of feeding people's momentary needs to providing for their life-fulfilling, lasting needs. And beginning in verse 56, he says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. This is the bread that came down from heaven. The disciples heard it. Their eyes likely got big with surprise, as did the eyes of all present. And when Jesus finishes, there's a silence which is broken by murmuring among those present. John includes a reaction from the disciples. On hearing it, many of the disciples said, This is hard teaching. Who can accept it? Remember those words? These are a definite down. The disciples are nervous that the crowd was leaving. The down is getting deeper. John writes, Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Does this make you want to reconsider if you've made the right decision to, in being so close to me? And sure enough, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. And then in verse 67, Jesus asked the 12 disciples, You do not want to leave too, do you? The disciples very likely did not want to make eye contact with Jesus. There's probably a long and awkward pause. And then Simon Peter has a flash of insight when he realizes something that we easily forget in those tough downtimes of life. He breaks the silence and in looking at Jesus says, Lord, to whom shall you go? Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter confesses, there is no other way. You have the words of eternal life. You are the, Jesus, you are the only person who can bring us life's ups in a wealth of blessings, peace, and a sense of meaning in our lives. And Jesus, you are the only person who can carry us through life's downs in times of trials, transitions, and temptations. There is no other way. Have you ever heard a testimony from someone who has been through a horrible tragedy and seen firsthand the faithfulness of God in that situation? We tend to pay close attention to these accounts because they inspire us to put our trust in the Lord. And of all the witnesses to God's grace in times of trouble, none is more compelling than the Apostle Paul. Paul was no stranger to hardship. Throughout his ministry, he was dragged, beaten, stoned, arrested, shipwrecked, and accused of heresy by both the Jewish leaders and the Roman government, one down after another in his life. And this was certainly a contrast to his early life when he enjoyed the opportunities that his Roman citizenship and Jewish education provided, the amazing ups in his life. And in the midst of these ups and downs, Paul discovered a valuable lesson. As in today's epistle lesson, he says, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. His attitude didn't change with his situation. It remained constant whether he had plenty or was in need. And in verse 13, he finishes the thought by saying, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I mentioned earlier that today's downs appear to be magnified into some kind of super downs, that life can't get any worse. This is just too hard. Maybe so. But on reflecting back in U.S. history, 
If you know of someone who was born around 1900 and you trace their lives for, say, 80 years, here are some of the major downs that they might have experienced. World War I, the Spanish flu pandemic, the Great Depression, World War II, the Cold War, the Korean conflict, and the Vietnam conflict. That's a bunch of downs. My dad was born in the early 20th century and lived through all of these events, and I never heard him say once, this is just too hard. And I'm sure that there are some of you here today that knew a friend or a loved one who experienced some or all of these events, events as well. And they too survived with the bedrock of Christ and the support of the church. They, like Paul, proclaimed, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And they, like Peter, confessed, Lord, to whom shall we go? There is no other way. God willing, a vaccine will be developed for this present virus. Some, and hopefully most of the present challenges that we face with this pandemic will either go away or be at least alleviated. Students will return to their classrooms. Workers will return to their jobs. And our economy will grow. Hopefully, our political polarization will give way to political cooperation. Hopefully, our racial tensions will give way to racial trust and understanding. Hopefully, our deep downs will give way to welcomed ups. I forgot to tell you how this lay message came about. Came about. A few months ago, I was reading my daily devotional in Portals of Prayers. The Bible reading covered the latter part of John 6, including Peter's confession. When I read that part, it dawned on me that, like today, we sometimes sing the words at the end of the epistle reading. So I asked Pastor Heckman what that verse is officially called. And I expected that he was going to tell me some hard-to-pronounce Latin words that I had no idea what they meant. Instead, he said, it's called the Alleluia verse. And I told myself, if I ever have the opportunity to give another lay message, it would be on John 6, 68. After many of Jesus' followers deserted him, he asked his disciples if they were going to leave also. Peter replied, to whom shall we go? In his straightforward way, Peter answered for all of us, there is no other way. Followers of Christ are often tempted to stop following him. Life's downs are just too tough. It's hard to stay faithful. Temptations are too many and too easy to give into. Doubts overcome our beliefs. However, the walk of faith means a daily renewal of loyalty to and trust in Christ. And no matter how high the ups are or how low the downs might be, like Peter, we can boldly confess, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There is no other way. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds through faith unto life everlasting. Amen.